down. Who's sitting there? Sit down. I'm excited to have you here with us on today. You are in for a treat. Let me welcome Westside Inside and Westside Worldwide. 
the psalmist says, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined his ear to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and will trust in the Lord. We sing now our workshop choir as they share with us a new song.
God and knew that the Lord had been so good to you. Choir, y'all go ahead and keep saying that one right there. If you know that the Lord has been good, go ahead and wave your hand. I shouldn't have to tell you to do anything. When you just think of the goodness of God. has really been good to you. I'm not talking about when they've really been good to you. We learned all as children that when someone's been good to you, the least thing you can do is to tell them what? I'm going to try it again. The least thing you can do is to tell them what? Well, I want us to take just a little bit of time. If you can think about something that the Lord has done for you just this week,
give God a clap of praise. Come on, if you're loving me here, just lift your hands towards heaven and just tell God something real good. God, you're a wonderful God. You're a merciful God. And you're an awesome God. And thank you, Lord, for bringing me through. And thank you, Lord, for bringing me out. And come on, come on and worship the Lord with the fruit of your lips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Uh, hallelujah. Hey. Come on, clap your hands. We got a song everybody can sing with us. Until it feels like heaven in the room. Yeah.
leadership training Wednesday, February 8th through March 15th. Register online at wbcchurch.org. Come join us for Hymn Day 2023 as we sing church hymns, followed by a food fellowship on February 8th at noon in the Assembly Hall. Brothers, the WBC Brotherhood Ministry is hosting a Super Bowl party on February 12th, starting at 5 p.m. Registration is now open at wbcchurch.org. Come taste the foods of the African-American tradition as a Taste of Soul is back with a Taste of Soul 2.0. It's going down on February 19th at high noon in the Assembly Hall. All attendees must register to attend, and registration is now open at wbcchurch.org. Please be in prayer for the families of Lawrence and Deidre Thomas on the loss of their loved one, Brother Herbert Thomas, and Velma and Bruce Cooks on the loss of their loved one, Sister Ola Durham. For additional information regarding any of these announcements and much more, please visit us at wbcchurch.org. Thank you and have a blessed week. Hey y'all, how y'all been? Well, it's going okay. A lot going on right now, so you know it's overwhelming. What support systems do you have in place to help you during these overwhelming times? Support system? Yes, sis, support systems, a group that can help encourage you when you need support in these overwhelming times. And guess what? Westside is about to start support groups on February the 7th at 7 p.m. That will be a great place for you to come to add support to your support systems. Oh, yes. They will be offering support groups on anxiety, depression, work-life balance and self-care, and also helping you to set some personal boundaries. It's a great place for you to get some support in those times that are overwhelming. We will, all you got to do, sister, is purchase a book. We're also gonna be doing some grief and anger management support groups, as well as parenting. So that means everybody can attend. And perhaps they should. Men and women, we're going to start mid-March with these last group of support groups. Mm, sounds good, but I think I'll continue to rely on God. Yeah, I hear you. But God has also blessed us with those that can help us and support us on our journey. And you probably don't know this, but God will be there too. <laughs> true, true. How do I sign up? Well, there are two ways you can sign up. You can, there's a QR code at the kiosk, you can do it that way, or you can simply go to WBC Westside. You can sign up there. Now support groups are not therapy, but it is a place for you to grow with people with similar concerns and experiences. It will help you gain, gain practical insights and tools for you to use on your journey. Sign up today, baby. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Come on down. Let me check for the record. Has the Lord been faithful to anyone? He has indeed. What a joy it is to meet you uh, on today and to greet you. Uh, that young man who was doing all that yelling at the front, of, was that you? Oh, I thought that was you. He's going to come back in just a minute and do some official greeting. I just want to take some time and uh, greet you. And I wanted some of the members of our church to join me in greeting you. If I can get, let me get some people from the Owls Ministry. If I can get some members from the Greeters. And uh, if I can get some members from the Ushers Ministry to come, come stand with me. 
Sometime this morning. Amen. Come on. All you, all you pretty boo. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is my this is my big sister slash surrogate mother. In these tight pants right here. This is her right here. Amen. She has spoiled me my whole life. I'm grateful. Now, I've been privileged to meet some wonderful people. If I can get the lights on, we, we have some. If you are visiting with us today, not, not first time, first time visitors, you can, I want you to stand too, but not just first time visitors. I want you to stand. If you're visiting with us today, if you are one of our guests, I want you to stand. Man, isn't that phenomenal? Please remain standing. Please, please remain standing. Uh, I, I, tried, I tried to get out and speak to all of you, but some of y'all just sit too high. I, I have two very special new friends I met today. Darian, raise your hand. Darian is up there, and uh, Dar Darian is one of those swole saints. Hey, man, I, I told him I'm going to have to take off my coat and compete with him. But he's here, the wonderful young man. Then I met today Miss Barbara Penn Akins. Raise your hand. Raise, raise your hand. She's here with us from, she's moved here from Detroit, and she was a deacon in her last church. And I got a chance to sit and visit with her. There's some wonderful people. Now, here's what we're going to do. These are some of the members of our ministry, our ushers ministry. Our owls ministry is our older and wiser leaders. And uh, what's the age for this? 55. Well, this is the ministry I'm in. Amen. We're going to come and we're going to love on you. And as we're loving on you, some of the members of our church are just going to get out of that seat automatically. And they're going to start loving on you. We're so glad that you are here and you make worship special. Would the members join me in making our guests feel welcome today? the choir look today my goodness I'm not gonna call you out Andre stand, stand up for me Andre just right there stand up no, now you know you now what's your last name I thought it was. I didn't know why you had all those G's on your shoe. 
my Gucci man. Listen, I'm so excited that you're here today. It has been a blessing uh, this week. This choir sang, and, and I, was, I was sharing, I think it was Deacon Futrell I was sharing with, that I have major issues for people who only shout when they get in front of a crowd. Y'all, they shouted so in practice. Oh my God, it, the spirit moved. And it is a testament not just to the level of clinicians that Dr. Bradley brought in, but also to the, to the gift and the genius that is Patrick Bradley. I want to say this. I wanted to say this, that, that we don't bring in clinicians because Patrick doesn't know how to teach. But one of the true gifts uh, and, and trademarks of genius is you bring in the best from other places so that where you are can appreciate what they have. We don't bring preachers in because I don't know how to preach. We bring them in so that you can appreciate that you have a caliber of preacher. And for Patrick, and when you're confident in your gift, you want to be surrounded by the best. And this whole week has just been phenomenal. This whole week has been phenomenal. I came up yesterday, and, and, and I was up yesterday, and uh, we had a stewardship. We had a stewardship uh, and uh, prayer, uh, virtual. And I think it's going to be that last virtual one. Right, Sharon and John? Yeah, that, that's, yesterday was the last virtual one. Everybody else, now we're going to be meeting in person. But it was phenomenal. It, uh, I'm listening, it was phenomenal. And I left with such a spirit of conviction. Y'all, I'm going to save some money in the year to come. Amen. Do less shopping. Come on. And one of my friends, Deacon Lester Robinson, has agreed to be my accountability partner. Amen. Now, tell the truth, most of us got, most of us got all the clothes we can wear from now on, don't we? We don't need nothing else. A amen. And I'm going to need you saving your money so we can pay for Imagine More. Amen. Praise. Praise the Lord. So I came up for the virtual, I came up for the virtual summit. And I'm going to sneak in. Now, you know on Zoom, you don't have to be in your night clothes, right? And I was, I wasn't tore up from the floor, but I was tore up from the floor to the waist. Is that about right? I had on some... So I'm going to slip in the church and just let them see my face. I got here, and we were having CPR classes. We had adult baptism classes, and we had the food giveaway. And it's exactly the kind of church I've always wanted, where everybody is being a blessing and everybody has a chance to give. You are a phenomenal church, and I want to celebrate the gift that is you. Let me tell you this, and, and I'm through. God moves slowly and suddenly at the same time. You can be praying for something for years, and one day you wake up and God has already done it, and you didn't even realize it. I've been praying for God to allow us to have a worldwide ministry, and y'all, we have people who come in monthly who come from England and UK and then God has blessed us with some wonderful members. I, I was just up visiting. I want you to stand right over here in this corner. Mario, y'all stand right over here in this corner. We have somebody from Ghana who's a member. We have this couple from Puerto Rico who's a member. And I remember from Puerto Rico yesterday was the kind of unofficial uh, interpreter. God moves slowly and swiftly at the same time. Receive now uh, Reverend Gerard Cooper as he comes. Amen. Church, say amen. Uh, just have a, f first of all, we want to uh, do this welcome. Now, let me say, if you don't feel welcome by now, um, if this is your 
first on, let me just cut to the quick. First of all, I just say, good morning. Turn to somebody next to you and just say, good morning. Now look at the other person on your left. I know you don't like them, but just look at them anyway and say, good morning. Yeah, and welcome to Westside and Westside Worldwide. We're thankful for you as well. We're glad that you've decided to join us in person and online. And at Westside, our mission, as always, is to serve God, share Christ, and love people. And hopefully, you will see and experience that as you worship with us today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we would love to connect with you. Uh, if you could please type the word guest, G-U-E-S-T, to 972-236-4543. Again, that's the word guest. Text it to 972-236-4543. Uh, please take the time to fill out the digital card at the link so we can maintain communication with you. If this is your first time visiting with us to Westside, you've never been here in this sanctuary before. If this is your first time, would you please stand and remain standing? If this is your first time, this is nobody's first time here, but thank you. Just stand again. I know. Stand again, please. We have something that we'd like to give to you. Come on. Let's celebrate them. Just remain standing. We're not going to make you say nothing. We have something that we'd like to give to you. Thank you for visiting with us here at Westside. You passed a whole lot of churches on your way, and we believe by divine assignment that God has you here. God bless you, and thank you for visiting with us today. Somebody say amen. Uh, I want to highlight just a few of these pulpit notes that are here on yesterday. Yesterday was January 28th, correct? January 28th. Okay. Yesterday, uh, virtually, as Pastor said, there was a prayer and stewardship summit. Come on, somebody put your hands together. And I want to specifically highlight Sister Sharon and Deacon Thompson. That's, there he is. That, that conference yesterday, virtually, it blessed my so I had a very small part, just giving a little call to worship and just reading some scripture. But the information, my prayer was that there would be an impartation of information concerning prayer and stewardship. And God moved yesterday in that conference. So thank you. Come on, put your hands together for that. Now, something I wasn't a part of, but I, I heard and I saw online, Dr. Bradley streamed something, the choir mu music workshop this week. Come on, put your hands together. He streamed a segment of y'all back there in practice, and the Holy Ghost was moving in that. So God bless you. God bless you. And to our guest clinician, Sister Regina Williams and Brother Stephen Warren. Come on. Come on. Stand up, my brother. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you for your gifts to the body of Christ. Amen. Next, on February 1st, at 7 p.m. Is that this this week? February for we're almost at February already, my lord. There is a church business meeting at 7 p.m. All members are encouraged to be in attendance at the church business meeting. Is Pastor in here? I like there he is, Pastor. On February 12th, there is a men's Super Bowl fellowship. Amen. And um I know that last week when you ended service, you, you had the blessing of speaking a blessing over my New York Giants. I know that your Dallas Cowboys are going to be. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you were at church last Sunday, you know what happened at the end of service. He was so prayerful over my New York Giants and how they got destroyed by the Philadelphia Eagles. There is going to be a Super Bowl fellowship February 12th uh, here at the church. I believe that's at 5 p.m. I've got Philly and, Sam, uh, Philly and Cincinnati in the Super Bowl. I got that one. Amen. Uh, next, there are discipleship classes here at Westside Spiritual Formation. Registration for those classes are online. You are encouraged to please register for those classes. Discipleship training, please register online at the website where you can come and be a part of that. Somebody say amen. At this time, we come to the point in our service, the blessed time, where we're able to give into the house of the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. 
offering is an act of worship, and you are able to give at the website at wbcchurch.org. You can text WBC Church to 833-360-6467. You have the app. That's the way that I give, the app, Westside Baptist Church app, where you can give, or you can just go ahead and mail your checks to 900 Bel Air Boulevard here in Louisville, Texas, 75067. How many of you know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver? That's the word. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. If you need an envelope right now, you can uh, lift your hand up. The ushers are coming down the aisles, and you can feel free to give an envelope as we prepare to give into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 And as we are preparing to give, I just want to say a brief prayer as we prepare to give into the house of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you in our giving. Lord, you have not withheld anything from us. And Lord, you will lavish us with your goodness and your mercy. So Lord God, right now, we're not going to hold back from you. Because you've only given to us, Lord God, we're going to give back to you a reasonable portion of that which you have given to us. So, Lord, we give it to you with grateful hearts, with cheerful hearts, that these offerings would be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, we even pray for those that may not have it to give, but the desire is there, Lord God. We pray blessing upon them. So receive now these offerings, Lord God, to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let everyone say amen, amen. At this time, we will now turn it over to Dr. Bradley. Memphis, Sister Sheila Taylor, she has her line sisters here all the way from Memphis. 26 years, you all clap for them. All the way from Memphis, y'all look at that. Amen. Thank you. How many got a reason to praise the Lord? Boy, y'all mighty quiet. I said... How many have a reason to pray? <laughs> this section over here looked like they were ready. How many have a reason to praise the Lord? If you can think of a reason, give God the best praise you have. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We're going to shout all by ourselves. Has God been good to anybody in here? Look at your neighbor and say, I got a reason to praise the Lord. I said, look at somebody and say, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, sing a song, sis. Thank you. 
walks with me, tells me I am his own. I've got a right, I've got a reason, I've got a right, I've got a reason. Yes, I praise him. 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 continues to keep us and he continues to bless us sometime in spite of ourselves but over and over I see you shaking your head over and over the Lord keeps making a way So we want to go and sing that, Lord, you continue to keep us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, if you don't mind, you ought to just begin to think about the good things that God has done for you. song, I just want you to start singing them out of your mouth. But the song says, you continue, continue to bless me. In spite of all the wrong I've done, you still gave your only son. Yes, you continue. Listen, even though I don't deserve all of the things you've done for me, I'll say yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, yes. Yeah. To your will. Yes, I will, Jesus. I'll say, Lord. Continue to bless me. Continue to bless me. Uh huh. Said, in spite of all, in spite of all the wrong I've done, say you still gave. You still gave. You're all these son. Say yes, yes you continue. Uh huh. Said, continue to bless me. Continue to bless me. Tell the Lord, say even. Continue to bless me. Continue to bless me. 
but that the gifts God has placed in you, you are using them for his kingdom. And somebody listen to me, you know God has been talking to you and you, you've just been reluctant to do. Let, let me do this. I was, I was watching on the news today, I was on this week, and, and over in Fort Worth, they had some conjoined twi twins. Anybody see that? And they were talking about how those twins, how all those doctors came together for those conjoined twins to separate them. And I called my boy and I said, man, I know just what they feel like because I was conjoined to sin. But one Friday night, I gave my life to Jesus and the great physician separated me. Somebody, somebody knows what freedom feels like when it doesn't take a group of doctors but just a great physician who can heal you with the touch of the heel of his garment breaks the shackles of sin. I, I would today that somebody listening to me who's been wrestling with God would today come and just say yes. To say, Lord, whatever your will is for my life, I'm willing today to surrender. I'm no longer in control. I want to say yes. If you would, come join us around the altar. If you just want to tell the Lord yes today. I don't even know what the question is, but yes. you right where you are to offer God a prayer of surrender to give it to him whatever it is you've been wrestling with to give it to him and I'm going to stand in covenant with you today 
today we leave whatever burden that is. The great physician separates us today. Today, whatever guilt you've been carrying for years, we, we leave that here today. Whoever told you you were not worthy to be loved and you didn't deserve it, we leave that here today. Whoever told you that God didn't like you like you are and you need to be like me for today we leave that here. And Lord, we surrender and say yes. Didi told us that we've got a reason and a right, but we also have a responsibility. We've got a responsibility to praise him because today God breaks every chain. Today God breaks every chain. Today the bound are liberated. Today you can be set free. Today. So Lord in this house, in this house, allow your spirit to run free. In this house, allow your spirit to break chains. In this house, allow your spirit to give purpose. In this house, allow your spirit to run in our hearts that we may know the love that Jesus has for us. And we may leave this committed to being more like you called us to be. In Jesus' name, we say thank you and amen. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me as you, as you return now to your seats. Listen. Yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Listen, listen, thank you, ushers. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give me, give me about 15 minutes and I'm going to, well, maybe a little bit longer. I got some hollering in me today. Amen. He continues to bless over and over again. For those of you who are visiting with us, I've tried. Uh, to greet you and some of you have been coming oh, uh, again and again I, I want you to feel welcome those of you who are members this Wednesday we're going to have a business meeting as uh, Reverend Cooper shared and um, Reverend Cooper I think I have your letter for another church since you want to talk about the cover we thank Reverend Cooper for presiding in his last service amen <laughs> And he can be at home with the Giants watching the Cowboys next. A amen. <laughs> but we're going to have a business meeting. And what that business meeting is about is you'll get a review because we believe in transparency of our resources and how we were stewards of them last year. But it will also be the launch, uh, the relaunching of our Imagine More campaign. Many of you have been been uh, hearing about Imagine More, and it's our attempt to not just duplicate, but to update what we had at our former service, to, to create a space for our children, a place for our children, a place for you, a place for seniors and those of us in between, a gymnasium, a commercial kitchen, a youth center and a children's center and to refresh our present building to do some updates with audio visual and, and it why do we need this place to grow i've been sharing it with you from the book of zechariah about us needing a place to grow and our world is such a broken 
place. I'm, I'm going to say that again. I, our, our world is such a broken place. I know I'm not the only one. I, I did everything I could to not watch uh, the video. Uh, but I was watching Channel 5, and they showed it. That, that inhumanity. In California, last week, in the past month, they've had four mass shootings. People just need a place to grow. The writer of the book of Zechariah that I've been sharing from shares with us this reality that God is so in love with us that God wants to partner with us in a place to grow. But God is so in love with us that God wants to be present with us in that place to grow. And because God loved us so much, he promised us he'd create a place for us to grow. Zechariah, the eighth chapter, verses one through eight have been our theme, and, and you just follow along with me. Thank you, AVP. You just follow along with me uh, in your scriptures. We're reading it from the message where God says, I am zealous for Zion. I, I care. I am angry about Zion. I'm involved. This is God's message. Listen, I've come back to Zion. I've moved back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's new name will be Truth City and Mountain of God of the Angels Armies and Mount Holiness. A message from the God of the Angels Armies old men and women will come back to Jerusalem, sit on benches on the streets and spin tails, move around safely with their canes. A good city to grow old in. And boys and girls will fill the public parks laughing and playing. A good place to grow up in. A message of the God of the angels' armies. Do the problems of returning and rebuilding by just a few survivors seem too much? But is anything too much for me? Not if I have my say. I'll collect my people from the countries to the east and countries to the west. I'll bring them back and move them into Jerusalem. They'll be my people. I'll be their God. I'll stick with them and do right by them. Grass withers, the flowers thereof fade the way, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I just want to talk about a place to grow, a place to grow. That's what, that's what we're attempting to build at Westside, a place to grow. That's, that's what Imagine More is all about. That's what serving God, sharing Christ, and loving people is to provide a place to grow. God says this. God says, I want to be present. He says, I'm coming back to be with you. And, and let me tell you why I got excited about that. I got excited for two reasons. First of all, I got excited because God shows a concern for the vulnerable. Listen to what he says. He says that those of us and I discover today, I'm, I'm in the old group. A amen. That, that, that it's going to be a place that's safe. Where old people will sit and spin tails, we can grow old in it. But young people can come, and when they come, they're going to feel so safe they can play. Now watch what God says. God says, I'm going to look out for the two most vulnerable sections of society, the most vulnerable demographics, the children and the seniors. Now, 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 here is why I wanted to shout, because God said the place that I'm going to be creating is going to be a place where the old will be properly respected. But, 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 but they're going to be fiercely protected. That what God says is that it's going to be so safe that all they'll have to do is sit around. And the older you get, the more stories you learn. Amen. Come on, come on. Most time they ain't got nothing to do with what you're talking about. A amen. <laughs> but God says they're going to feel so safe that they'll be comfortable. Now watch what God says. He says that while the old will be properly protected and vehemently, fiercely respected, because you won't just be able to say or treat them any kind of way, they will know they have worth. 
He says, guess what I'm going to do for the children? He says, I'm going to have a special place that's facilitated just for them. Uh, imagine more. But I'm going to have some programs that are created just for them. And then I'm going to have some people who are dedicated. Preach Delvin Atchison. I am. I am. We're still catching our breath from the shout. But, but, but God says, here's what I'm going to do, that I'm going to create this venue where people can come. And in order to have children playing, that means in order to have children, they have to have parents. And you got to have somebody who's going to take care of the old. God says that I've got a place for everybody and you can be safe. That's what I like about Westside. You ain't got to be like me. You don't have to go to school where I went to school. You don't have to dress like I dress. You don't have to live where I live. Whoever you are, you have worth in this place. And it is a place that has a concern for the vulnerable. But y'all, that ain't all. When God is present, it's not just concern for the vulnerable. It becomes, the text tells us, a consecrated venue. It's, it's in the text. God said, I'm going to move back. And one of the things you got to understand about God is that whenever God comes back to a place, that God's presence always rolls with his crew, that you will never find God's presence when it's not active, that God is the only entity for whom presence is active, that if I say I'm going to be there, it just means I'm going to be in the building. But whenever God shows up, that, that place becomes, when God shows up, is sanctified by his presence. When God shows up, his presence brings his power. When God shows up, his presence brings provision. But let me just go ahead and shout you. Not only is it sanctified by his presence, but it's going to be saturated with his power. Let me tell you why I wanted to shout this morning. People keep thinking that they can treat God. If I want to see you real bad, I come to your house. And people, we've been telling people, come on back to church to be with us. Listen, you don't have to come back. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. Don't come back if that, that's not what you want. Don't come back because I see what God is doing. The seat you used to sit in, somebody else will sit there. But let me tell you what you won't get at your house. You won't get the same experiences of his presence he has in his house because when God is in the building, I don't need everybody, but I wish I had about eight and a half people to help me testify that there's something you can get at the church that you can't get in your house. And God says, I've been missing you. I keep showing up in my house. I prepared a blessing for you. You got healing on layaway, and you won't even show up to get it. Yeah, yeah. If you don't believe me, check out Second Chronicles. He said, I'll be a tent until the prayer is offered in this place. You see, when I, I tell people all the time, when I travel, if you travel and you're in the hotel, you might leave some of your stuff in your suitcase because you don't plan on staying there. When we travel, Brenda puts stuff neatly in the, but I just leave because I'm going to put it back in there. This ain't my house. I ain't going to have every, but when I get home, and, 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 and I'm going to have to go on with some of y'all because I know I'm going to get in trouble. When I get home, when I come back, I just start throwing stuff everywhere. I'm, this is my house. I'm glad to be back. Well, y'all, let me tell you what God does when we invite him to come in. He just start throwing stuff in. Oh, healing. So, somebody need provision. Oh, yeah. S somebody dealing with, oh. He throws stuff everywhere when he comes to his house. And what God is saying to us is I want to be present in your place to grow. A few months ago, we were waiting on my son, Ronnie, to come home. And Ronnie called his mother, and he was in Fairfield. He was on his way home. And so, uh, this is the difference between mothers and fathers. And fathers, you forget. I went on back to sleep. <laughs> I went on back to sleep. I was going to see him in the morning. His mama said, D. Y'all know she called me D. She don't call me Pastor Ty. She said, D. <laughs> Ronnie should have been home. I say, well, baby, let me call her. I call Ronnie, and Ronnie said, oh, I'm, I'm already here. I've been here. I just didn't want to wake y'all. Y'all, what we were waiting for was already in the house. And let me, let me give you a shout on top of that. We had been looking for the sun, and the sun was already in the house. I don't need everybody. But is there anybody here who knows the sun is in the house? 
And when he's in the house, healing can take place. When he's in the house, salvation can take place. When he's in the house, deliverance can take place. What you've been looking for is already in the house. He desires to be present with us in a place to grow. But y'all, look, look at the text what God says. God said, I'm not just going to be present with you, but I'm going to provide for you in a place to grow. But listen, listen to what he says. He says, I'm going to move back, and when I come back, it's going to be called, it's an interesting term, he says it's going to be called faithful city. The idea is this, this mountain of God is a place where everybody is going to be treated right. Listen, we live, we live in a place where people can be so cruel, so callous. And we thought it was a black and white issue. They bore the burden of the same ebony hue as do I. In the words of Hughes, they like I am the darker brother. It's not a skin issue, it's a sin issue. No, not your skin, your heart. And what we have an opportunity to do is we have an opportunity to create a place, a safe place. God says, I want to be present, but God says, I want to provide. L listen, listen to what he says. He says, I want to provide two things. First of all, I want to provide you with members. Because Watch what God says. God said, don't get scared because it ain't a lot. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be rebuilding with the remnant. That those of you who stayed around, the members who have been foundational, I'm going to rebuild with the remnant. That, 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 that we get excited because, you know, people have become so conscious of the ecology. Y you know, that's what Marvin was telling us Mercy, mercy me. You, you remember that great theologian. Things ain't what they used to be. Radiation. He was saying take care of the ecology. So in order to do that, we start talking about recycling. And God said, y'all late to the show. I've been taking things that have been broken and used up. I've been taking trash and making treasures out of it. So here's what he says. He says, so, so I'm going to rebuild with the remnant. He says that the people who are here, I know you are tired, I know you are weary, but I'm going to renew your strength. But that's not all I'm going to do. He says, I'm going to collect some converts. Do y'all know last year we had 170 people to, to be a part of our fellowship, to become a part of our fellowship. This year alone, we've had over 40 people to become a part of the fellowship. It's not because we have the best choir, and I think we do. It's not because we got the coldest band, and I think we do. It's not because you've got the sharpest, brightest, most handsome ushers. See? See? I think we do. But it's because the promise of God is to bring people. And all we got to do is prepare because God says, I'm going to bring them from the north and the south, the east and the west. That's why when they come, they don't look like we look. That's why when they come, they ain't from the same city I'm from. That's why some of them come with accents and swag because they're coming from different places because God says, I'm gathering people and the people I'm gathering might not look like the people I already got. But then God says, I'm not just going to give you members. I'm going to give you money and material. Yeah, yeah. He says, is it too hard? D does it seem to be too much? It ain't for me. And God says, I'm going to have myself. Because here's the thing. If you add everything to nothing, you still got everything. I don't understand how people get scared when God put tasks in front of us as if God, listen, I tell people when people were tripping about the pandemic, I said, you know, they had one before and God survived that one. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me preach today. Listen what God will do. The testimony of Zechariah is that when the Babylonians got the children of Israel, God had Cyrus and the Persians to bless them. I just need about four people to help me testify that God doesn't have to use folk in the church to be a blessing to the church. Because God knows how to make folk who don't even like you bless you. 
and they'll be wondering, and you'll be wondering too. Because what God is saying is, I'm going to do it. Now, let me tell you how God blesses this church. God will bless us by giving you blessings that he doesn't mean for you to hold on to. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach. We keep trying to be reservoirs, and God said, I'm blessing you to be a river because the amazing thing about God is that God has an amazing way of blessing us that while I'm giving out of this pocket, I go to, oh, he, while I'm giving over here, am I the only one that God has ever blessed? And God said, I bless you. And let me be clear that God right now may be touching somebody's heart who can completely finance everything that we need for Imagine More. God says it may be too big for you, but it's not too big for me. Let me tell you what I've discovered about God. Let me tell you what I've discovered about God. It's amazing what God can do with just one person. I saw those people beat that young man. I saw one roll up like he's going to help him. Do you know if one person would have stood up? N never underestimate the power of one. But let me tell you, those of you who are considering becoming a part of our fellowship, it's a mighty pole dog won't wag his own tail. Let me tell you about the good people of the West Side Church. During COVID, when churches were struggling, we were sending between two and six thousand dollars a month. Not, not to the convention. We kept giving them that, but we were finding churches that didn't have video equipment, and we would send to buy them video. We would find churches that weren't meeting and weren't able to take care of pastors and send them. Every month, we send money to the convention. We send money to the evangelical board, but we spotlight churches that are struggling. I ain't talking about who we ask for this. I'm not talking about somebody sending money through. I'm talking about y'all give money. A tenth of what God gives us, we give to others. And let me tell you why I'm so excited about Imagine More. I'm not even waiting on a new season because God told me if we didn't faint, we had a due season coming. I ain't looking for a new season. I'm waiting on my due season. I just believe that God has a due season for folk who've been blessing other folk. Well, let me conclude. Let me conclude. L listen, listen, listen. God wants to be present. God will provide, but God wants progress for his people. Listen to what this text says. I'm, I'm ready to shout. God says, you're going to grow old. That's a maturing faith. Is there anybody in here who just feels like you're a little bit closer to the Lord than you were this time last year? That just the stuff he took you through. Because, see, I, I want to grow old in the Lord. I want to have a maturing faith, but I also want to grow up in the Lord. Because what he says is we won't just have a maturing faith, but he says we're going to have multicultural and multi-generational families. That we're going to have families that where the father is present and some where the mother and father both are some where they are, some where you are a single person, some where there's a couple with no children. You don't have to look like my family, but your family is going to be welcome in this place because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going we're gonna to have people growing to look like the body of Christ, that's, that's when we grow up, when we grow out. But then he also says that we'll be able to grow old, grow up, and grow out. And that growing out means we're going to have a magnetic fellowship, that when folk come around, they won't even know why they're going to be drawn to this place. Here is the reality. I hear folk talk about other churches, and God has a church with your name on it. And this may not have your name, but one thing I know is that if you like church, this is a good place to be. Because if you come to this place, the Spirit of the Lord is going to be in this place. But y'all, I'm going to my seat when I tell you we're going to grow old together. We, we're going to grow out together, that, that, that we're going to grow up together. But I, I got a sneaking suspicion. Oop, there it is. I just got happy, y'all. I got a sneaking suspicion that we're going to grow onward together. And so as I'm preparing to go to my seat, can I just remind somebody of an old song that says, let the church be the church. 
let the people rejoice for we've settled the question and we've made our choice let the anthems ring out and songs of victory swell for the church triumphant is alive and well this old ship has been through some battles before we've had storms and tempest and rocks on the shore though the hull may be battered the inside is safe and dry it will lead its cargo to that port in the sky let the church be the church let the people rejoice for we settle the question and we made our choice is there any 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 anybody here that want Westside to be a place to grow is there anybody here that know God is still in the moving business is there anybody here that no God is in the saving business. Is there anybody here that no he's in the providing business? Is there any, 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 anybody here that no the man is all right? with you. Won't he come see about you? Won't he take care of your children? Won't he heal your body? Won't he fix your heart? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? listening to me today God brought you to this place so you could be a part of a place that is growing and God led you here today so you could make a decision to be in covenant with people who want to make a difference not just in our community but in the whole world God led you to a place where you would feel loved and accepted. And today I want to give you an opportunity to become a part of our family. And we're going to stand all over the building. And as we're standing, some of the members of our church are going to be walking. And the reason they are walking is that if God is leading your heart to become a part of this family, you don't have to walk alone. We want to walk with you. Come become a part of a place to grow. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. Come on, come on. Come on. You hear his voice. Today, God is inviting you to come, and I just 
Spirit of God is moving in this place. We want to thank God for those that have joined the church today. Come on. Put your hands together right now for the move of God in this place. And right now, I'm going to ask um, for those that have joined our pastors right there, just as a sign. God bless you. Come on, put your hands in. Come on, stand up here for those that have joined. Come stand right here. Come stand right here so we can, we can see you and my sister who can read their name. Bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a time we had with the Lord today. Um, first of all, I just want to say welcome to our new members who have come to join us. This is us. This is who we are. This is how we worship. This is how we praise. And we just, you know, want to love on you and just thank God for you coming to join um, and be a part of our family. So church, um, please help me welcome um, our newer members. Um, we have Brother Edward and Rochelle Tarvin. Stand forward. We also have Sister Cheryl Brooks. Thank you just for being phenomenal. I mean, he is B A D T bad. And he blessed us. And y'all, every night, he uh, during that uh, every night during that uh, workshop, he gave his all. You can tell. You can tell dedicated and commitment people by who they hang around. Thank you for bringing us excellence. Thank you. Now here's what I need. Here's what I need. Thank you so much for becoming a part of our family. If you are between the ages of 18 and 45, can I see you right here, right after church, real quickly? Right, Jermaine? 18 and 45, just real quickly. Amen. Leroy, you can go on on. Quit pretending. I'll, I'll be 18 and 45, just right here real quick. Thank you for coming today and making today phenomenal. Listen, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday night so you can see the plans for Imagine More. Let's stand as we make ready to go. Come on, Gerard. Give us our benediction. to go. There's nothing else to say, but I'll just ask if you would just lift your right hand. You know, when they give the benediction, it's just speaking a blessing, and I just pray, Father, thank you for what your spirit has done in this place. Thank you, Lord God, that everyone here, and even those on West 5 Worldwide that are tuned in, receive your blessing. So we can simply conclude by saying, now unto him, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, 
according to the power that works in us. To your name, God, be glory and honor, dominion and power, henceforth, now and forevermore. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. God bless you, my son. For the first time, first time visitors, first time visitors, please go back to the kiosk. There's a sign right there. First time visitors, please go back to the kiosk right here in the main St. lobby as we will get information from you. God bless you.